I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excuse me. All right, good evening, everyone. We'll call the meeting to order at 7.06 p.m. And we'll move on to item number three, public comments. Same as always, name and address for the record, please. Peter Raza, 33 Woodcrest Road in Seymour. Um, I like your website and first select New Seymour. There's a lot of information on there. Sometimes it makes me happy, sometimes it doesn't. Um, there, it, when you note, uh, made a reference and notice of the historical uh, ordinance that was being proposed, someone asked about a dog park, and then they suggested that a dog park be put into the Sochran area, Sochran's Pond, and I respectfully uh, request that that not be done. That's a pretty dense uh, residential area. It's the only town park in the area. The kids do go there and play basketball a lot, and they uh, they do play uh, football and baseball and amongst all the goose stuff that's left behind by them, but they do use it, and kids do fishing there too. And um, I'm concerned that uh, if a dog park is put in there, um, it's going to make a, first a mess of the, the grassy area there. Um, and there, there were a lot of um, pretty good birds that fly into the pond down there. I've seen little green herons great blue herons and um, other white white big birds, uh, uh, I don't know what they are, <coughs> gorblers and so on. And that, from that pond all the way up to Woodcrest Road, it's pretty much a, a nature uh, sanctuary. Um, there, there are deer, fox, and, and other animals that go through there and go down to the pond. So um, I, I don't like the idea of a dog park there because it is a crowded area. Moss Avenue, as you know, is not the best road. There's that hump in the beginning. And the dog parks do bring in people from other towns, non-residents. I know people that, one of the people that respond to you says he brings it to Southbury, his dog. And that's in a quarry area. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Um, there's no houses there. One in Wallingford, I've seen that. There's no houses around there. So and there's a it, there's two houses on each, either side, one across the street and then the pond. The pond might get polluted with what it runoff you get from the dogs. And the, the guys that live next door, I mean, it's right there. He's going to see those barking dogs all the time. So I'm asking that uh, perhaps the senior center area, the community center there, um, and, you know, to the right of the skate park, skateboard park, might be a good place for it. Um, but I would suggest that it be put in an area that's not residential. And I thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Is there any other public comments? I'm Barbara Raza, um, 33 Woodcrest Road, Seymour. I just want to agree with Pete on that. It is a residential residential area, and kids. I mean, I drive by Moss Avenue and the park every day, almost every day. And in the spring and summer, you will see kids play in there. They'll be playing baseball or football. It's not always organized sports that are that they used to have it there but not anymore, but I do see kids still using the park. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. Is there any other public comments? Just in the microphone, or else they won't be able to hear you on the camera. <coughs> One last thing. I think there's an expenses uh, sprinkler system put in there for the soccer fields, which uh, weren't used for organized soccer anymore, but it's still there. So. Um, it'd be a shame to let that go to waste. We can get rid of those ducks, those geese, somehow by putting a fence around it or, or whatever. But I think they should, soccer field should, kids should go back there and play there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comment? No. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. We'll move on to item number four which is approve the minutes from the February 5th, 2019 regular meeting. Can I have a motion to do so? Second. Motion by Anne-Marie, second by Al. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Abstain? Aye. Abstain. Chair votes aye. Motion passes 4-0-2. And please note Bob and Trisha's abstentions. <coughs> 
Item number five, approved minutes from the February 5th, 2019 spe uh, special town meeting. Can I have a motion to do so? Mm -hmm. Motion by Stefan, second by Anne Marie. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Abstained. Uh, chair votes aye. Motion passes 402. And again, please note Bob and Trisha's abstentions. <clears throat> okay, first selectman's report. Um, no first selectman's report tonight simply because I forgot to type it, so I apologize for that. But I just want to give you a quick um, overview of what I would have talked about. Um, as you know, I presented my budget to the Board of Finance with a no mill increase, uh, but with some caveats. And I just want to go over those just to make sure this board is aware. Um, number one is health insurance. And then number two is municipal aid. I made that clear to the Board of Finance. We'll find out a lot tomorrow when the governor proposes his budget. He's going to do that around noon. We should start getting uh, information from CCM in the morning. They start to leak different parts out uh, before the budget, before the governor actually speaks. And then the other part is health insurance. Uh, we put in a much larger renewal number than we have in the past. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure if that number is going to be high enough or not. Um, our loss ratio over the last two or three months has just been absolutely atrocious. So. We're in negotiations uh, with Cigna, trying to bring them down to a number that is more palatable. Um, but at the same time, we put our census together and we are putting, more than likely, we will be putting um, it out to the market just to see uh, what we may get. I have informed the four municipal presidents on the town side that we'll be doing that so they are aware. So that way there's no issues with the unions. One of the things that we had agreed to uh, when all of uh, when we switched from Blue Cross to Cigna was that we informed them. I've done that, and they're all they're all aware of that. So I'll keep you guys posted. But just to give you an idea, between the town and the Board of Ed, every one percent is about sixty-seven thousand that will add to our budget. So obviously, it's it's something of uh, something of concern. So that's what my report would have been officially. So Monica, if you didn't get all that, I can actually type it all up and send to. Okay. <coughs> All right, with that, we'll move on to item number seven, which is presentation from the Director of Development Enforcement. Um, as you all recall, um, this board decided that we needed to um, have this be a little bit more, I shouldn't say professional, because that's not really fair, but just full-time, a little bit more organized, kind of break down the silos and things that we had. So we created this a, a department. Uh, Jim has stepped forward to lead this department. So we wanted to put him in the regular cycle of presentations just to have him give us an update of what's going on so with that Jim I'll turn it over to you good evening um, like Kurt said I'm Jim Baldwin I'm the director of land use and code compliance department 